Now, I, I just scammed you guys because all I talked about was energy density, how much energy per uh, weight. Why would I do that? And look at this, this is kind of neat. So here's a Boeing 777 etching tool, machine tool automobile. I have them all on the same curve. And we heard about manufacturing. Let's put some meat behind manufacturing. Look at what I plotted. This is like I'm being really dumb, which I usually am. It's just pounds and dollars, and you tell me how many you make. And I put you all on the same curve. So there's a Boeing 777 etching machine. What won't work here is an Intel chip in a pharmaceutical. I'm talking about just manufacturing stuff, not flitty stuff, real stuff, okay? So there you go. It all fits. You just need to know the weight and how many you make. Now watch this. If I can put a Boeing 777 and a McDonald's hamburger on the same curve, there's something up here. Now, what's wrong with, what's wrong with energy systems? How do you guys think about energy or how do we live energy? You don't even build them. You, you build fewer than Boeing 7. You build one thing and it weighs a lot. So you're way up here. And I guess what I'm telling you, if you're going to attack this non-legacy world and get them energy, then what you need to do is go way out here, go to infinite production, and you better make it light. It's that simple. It's exactly how we don't do energy. You guys are pop tech. You used to thinking like this, so start doing it with energy. That's why you hear Metcalf always saying Enertech. So what you got to do, that's why I like energy density, because energy density means it's light and I can make a lot of it. Okay, how does the leaf work? A leaf works by, it stores a tremendous amount of energy, but then it needs to use it. So why is photosynthesis not great? And this is one problem always with biology, if you live most living things use most of the energy to live, right? Not to give you oil wells. And so this thing, the way it works is it takes light in, and this is from, remember when you were in grade school, light plus water and CO2 makes sugar and O2. What you don't realize is that most of the energy storage is in water splitting up front, O2, and you make hydrogen. The hydrogen you make is NADPH, okay? That's just solid hydrogen, nature's hydrogen. And then it fixes it with CO2, but there's no energy here. This is called the Calvin cycle, no, no energy. That's a structural engineering problem. Plants need to stand up. That's what it's doing there. All the energy storage is right up front, sunlight in, rearrange the bonds of water and make hydrogen and oxygen. So here's a fuel, CCCH bonds, right? That's fuel. There's oxygen, you just turn the engine on in your car, here's what happens, watch. Look at that. And tell you right, I almost won uh, People's Choice for Best Film, beating out, <laughs> beating out my friend Marshall Herskovitz, who did Blood Diamond, almost. Okay, so CCCH bond plus OO bond, All right? I'm gonna burn it, here it is again. 18 hours of PowerPoint to make this. <laughs> okay, there you go. What you get, you get CO2 and water, and then you use the extra energy. That's what you do. So what's a plant doing? It takes low energy bonds, water, uses sunlight to rearrange the bonds. You need the sunlight. Rearranges the bonds to make oxygen and hydrogen. So you take those bonds, rearrange them, and you store the energy in high energy bonds. If you guys don't like hydrogen, I don't have any, I'm, I'm agnostic, then take the hydrogen and go the extra step with plants. You're not gonna store energy, but you'll put it in a liquid fuel. So then fun people to do that. But the bottom line is you wanna use water as your energy source. Remember, in this, Thing in photosynthesis, what you're doing, the CO2 is only a hydrogen carrier. It's not storing energy, it's just carrying hydrogen. So you do what you feel like. But you're gonna use water. That's one of the things I want you to do. Now, why do I want you to use water? Because I can tell you how much energy in one molecule of water, and then if you have a bunch of mole, it's called, I can tell you how much energy is in there. There's the MIT pool. Remember those 
horrible numbers I told you about, and I said those kids might be in big trouble? Well, they aren't. All right, so here's your message of hope. All right, and I'm serious. That pool, if I took it to hydrogen and oxygen per second globally, you know how much energy I get that I can store? 43 terawatts. I only need, so listen to me now, I only need one third the MIT pool and I have to take it to hydrogen and oxygen. And if you don't like hydrogen, fix it with CO2, I could care less. But you gotta just take that much water using sunlight and I can take care of this problem, right? That's at 100% efficiency. If you're gonna use hydrogen, you have a fuel cell, it's 50% efficient. So we're at double, two thirds of pool. The bottom line is I'm talking about solving the energy problem with an Olympic sized pool of water, all right? That we'll be doing globally per second. That's your hope. And it's because there's so much energy density in that fuel. So what you want to do then, you want to be the hamburger meat of energy, because now I got to do that cheaply. And that means forget about always being so efficient. It's always just like efficient. With efficiency comes huge costs. I'm going to give up efficiency at the price of being able to make something quickly. That is something, if I could, if I could split water out of that glass, I could make something cheap and maybe highly manufacturable. That's what my group did a year and a half ago. I guess that's why I'm here. Um, we figured out how to do artificial photosynthesis. Okay, so we made a thing, and it's, I'm not going to tell you what it is. It, it self-assembles immediately. It works at almost perfect efficiency, 80% efficiency. It can take sunlight from a photovoltaic, and it can split water to hydrogen and oxygen. Out of a glass of water, works under inexpensive, it's highly manufacturable, it's self-healing, isn't that nice? We figured out how as it broke down it could fix itself, so it's the first time that something like this is always healing itself, never have to go back to it. Here's another one I like, look at this. Every commercial thing dies and we run ours out of the Charles River, okay? And we can use human wastewater, and we can use... So you hear what I'm saying now? Not only can you take water and store energy, if I had human wastewater or junky water, I can split it, make hydrogen and oxygen, and then recombine and have clean drinking water. Okay? So that's what's happening. So you have distributed energy and clean water for the future. Let me show you how you, your option now, this is my point, you can make, buy one of these things off of Google between ten and $50,000, and they're manufactured one at a time. I gave up this number, look it, I gave up a factor of 10, it's all plastic. We can mass produce it, it's just plastic, and we can be at $100. The DOE target for hydrogen, or if you wanna make a liquid fuel, 2025 is 2,000 per kilowatt. By next year, I guarantee we'll be at around $300 for kilowatt, all right? And 15 years early, because we made something from the ground up. That's why you should invest in basic science. Okay, so you're gonna live like this. Look it, that's how it's gonna work. Light in, this is a pretty expensive home. But I can now start to think about this. So let me expl explain how it's gonna work. Light in, you can use cheap PV, you heard about a cheap PV inkjet. It turns out Sharp is throwing away 6% silicon. They just throw it away, throw it away. I can use it for poor people right now and save a lot of lives. So I can take cheap PV, go to this all plastic electrolyzer. Storing hydrogen and oxygen is not hard. It's just the tank, it's stationary, you just put it there. You can go into Sears and buy a canister, but then you need a fuel cell but your house becomes a gas station and power station, right? And so either you use the hydrogen in a fuel cell or make a liquid fuel. So here we go, mainframe, look at, doesn't this sound familiar? Mainframes, personal computers, you guys love this stuff? Look at, you saw cell phones, look at, oops, grid, oh, personal energy, the grid is the mainframe. You saw a picture of old cell phones, here's a picture of old mainframes. Watch the grid now, watch. Oh. Okay. 
I'm kidding. I just don't want you to go build the grid in that non-legacy world, because first it's too big, it's gonna cost too much, and then they're gonna fuel it with coal. And luckily we haven't polluted them yet. So let's just go this route, I'm telling you. Here I am in National Geographic last month. I'm holding for this very expensive house. I calculated the amount of water I have to split the hydrogen and oxygen per day to run that house. Okay, that's it. So if I go to the non-legacy world, you know, we heard about kids in Africa. Imagine a lot of them are going three hours to read at the airport at night and then walk back. All I need is one of those little drink bottles of water you're drinking today. I just need three quarters of it, the hydrogen and oxygen. And I can give those kids 150 watts a day would change their lives. So that's where the future is. It's not that bad. I'm telling you, it's a message of hope. We just have to deal with water and sun, and you'll be fine. Okay, thanks.